Minister, how, how do you know the woman uh, you met in New Delhi uh, hasn't made any contributions to Canada? And how about her sons and daughters? Uh, like, do you think category that uh, because she didn't speak English, uh, she didn't make a contribution to Canada plus uh, her no, no, sons I, I, and daughters? I'm sure she has made a contribution, and, and I'm sure that uh, you know, uh, uh, basic ability to communicate um, is not necessary to make a contribution. Having said that. All of, the, all, of the associate, all of the data, all of the studies indicate that the single most important factor uh, in successful economic integration uh, is, um, is linguistic ability. It's not the only factor, and there are obviously people who don't have uh, the official language ability who do succeed very well in Canada, but as a general rule, we want to make sure that people who come to Canada um, uh, do have an ability to communicate with their neighbors and and uh, and with with fellow Canadians in in one or two languages. We're not asking people. We're, by the, I want to be clear. There's a lot of demagoguery around this issue. We're not saying that everyone who immigrates to Canada has to be fluent in either language or even have an ability to speak either language, because obviously, family class immigrants, refugees, uh, don't uh, require any language uh, ability. It's helpful in the federal skilled worker program. But, uh, uh, but what we are seeing is if you want to become a citizen, um, if you're not a kid or a senior, um, the law requires you to have a basic ability to communicate. And I'm simply saying that, that we should, we're providing the tools. We need to, we need to help people so that they can become um, they can become successful. And the single 